Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Creep Designs by Twitch. So I was recently commissioned to restore all of these pieces of Chinese antiques that were brought over from Hong Kong. And I will be starting on this one here, which is an altar. All right, we're not stuffing around on this one. We are getting stuck straight into it because there is a lot to do. So I am definitely using paint stripper on all of these pieces to make my life a little easier, as much as I hate using paint stripper. I'm using poly paint stripper from Bunnings. Uh, there are more eco-friendly options out there, but I was going with what is easily accessible and what I can get the most bang for my buck for, because I have a lot to do. Removing the hardware was pretty straightforward. Once I got stuck into it, it was all pretty much just pins and nails, and that was it. Okay, so whilst I don't want to show a great deal of stripping because there's going to be a lot of it and, you know, I'm just going to show you some fun parts of it. But I really wanted to show you this part because it's the really detailed stuff that a lot of people hate doing because it is a pain in the butt. So first thing I'm going to do, I haven't cleaned any of this. I, I haven't wiped it down or anything. There's still dust on it and everything. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is grab my brush, load it up with paint stripper, and I'm just brushing it on and stabbing it in there to make sure it gets right into all the details. I'm just using cheap brushes for my paint stripper, so I can just throw them out when I'm done. I don't throw it out in between days or anything like that. It'll be a little bit firm the next day, the next morning, but I'll just smash it around in a bit of um, paint stripper and it softens up again and it's good to go. So I'm only doing small sections, so I don't have to worry about it drying out. Make sure you got your stripper on there liberally. Uh, you can also get spray 
paint strippers, which would definitely be easier for this kind of thing, but this is what I'm working with. So I got this attachment from Bunnings, and this is a, I think it was called a nylon cup brush. Um, they're soft, but they're still coarse enough that they will do the job. But these one, this one is specifically made for wood, so it won't damage the wood. So I've just got this attached in my impact driver. That just looks like that. I'll put the link in the description for this for Bun from Bunnings, um, and I'll see if I can find something on Amazon that's more accessible to people who aren't in Australia. So after I go over it with that, I like to give it a spray with some Cartonelli Clean Cut or whatever cleaner you use. And I'm using, it's kind of like a stiff bristle cleaning brush. Like if you really don't want to use that drill, uh, the impact driver attachment, um, you can just go in with cleaning brushes like this. I think it just takes a bit longer. I spray it down and I get some 4 or 4 0 steel wool. So I'll go over that a couple of times doing the same thing until I've got all of the old finish off and I'll also go in with my carbide scraper or whatever, whatever scraper will fit in there. I'm currently going between this one, my scraper, this carbide scraper with this attachment on it. I've got that on the go <laughs> and I'm also doing a bit of scraping by hand just with the little blades and just using the different things to get in different places. As for these spots here, so these flat parts that are hard to get into, for these I like to take my blade out of my Barco carbide scraper and I just hold, poke it through and I'll hold it like that on an angle and just use it like that. And this is how she looks the next day. So I gave it another once over with the paint stripper and the drill attachment, scrubbing brushes, scrapers, all that jazz. She's looking a damn sight better and nice and clean, but still need to get in there with the scrapers and stuff to get all the little detail parts. I'm not going to worry about like all these little bits and pieces, all the little lines and details and stuff. Um, but just the, the bulk of it. So in these parts, I'll get in there and get all of that, but it looks better and uh, I'll move back a bit. So that's the whole front part done. And now I'll be moving on to the drawers, but yeah. Looking Okie dokie artichokey. Been watching, um, what's her name? She does the cakes, the really cool cakes. I can't think what they're called now. Tigger Mac, that's it, Tigger Mac. 
Every time she starts a video, she says, okie dokie, artichokey. Anyway, <laughs> um, so I fixed a split that ran along here. There's obviously a very prominent gap that runs along the length of this. Um, I don't know if those were intended to be there or if it's just separated over time. Um, there was not going to be any fixing or filling this gap. You can see there's one on the other side. It runs the full length, so I'm pretty sure it's part of the design or maybe they're there to leave, allow room for expansion as it ages. But anyway, I fixed this split and I posted a photo of what I've done here on Instagram and Facebook and someone has asked how. I don't know why it didn't occur to me to show how I fixed it. Obviously, I can't undo it now, but I've searched all over the rest of the top for another split and there's one here. See, eh, eh, eh. there we go. There's a bit of a split there. So that's basically how that was there, but that that one was a lot bigger and the strip that had split away was warped. Um, so I was not going to be able to force it back into shape because it was warped like like it had a dip in it. I don't know why I made sound effects, but anyway. Um, so what I did to kind of fix that was I split it kind of on an angle with my utility knife and cut a little slither out, sliver out on an angle, on the same angle, took that out and that gave it, um, took some of the length out of it so that it would be straight again. You can see where I've cut it out, but it'll look better than if it was bowed out anywhere along there, if that makes sense. All right, so I'm going to show you how I did this over here. It's really easy. Here it is. So I've got these bamboo skewers or bamboo stakes. They're from the gardening section. Um, and I've used multiple along here, but for this small split, I will only need one. So I'm just snapping that. It is too thick to fit down there like that. So I just grab my knife. Try and do it without, you know, cutting yourself. Oh, that one really doesn't want to go. Check the thickness as you go, that should be fine. So, as you can see, I've just thinned it out a bit. If I was to just tap it in there like that, it would end up leaving an indentation on the surface on both sides. So I just grab my knife again and cut a small wedge on the end. So I just, where are we? I just taper the end a little bit so it goes a bit like a wedge and then so that it doesn't get stuck in there once the glue dries I get a bit of tape oh yeah, I'll do and fold it over the end so it looks like that so I've got my little wedge and I've got, don't have my glue, I've got my glue, and I'm just using the blade to get the glue in there. Okay, uh, I'm just going to use my palette knife to kind of run the glue 
along the length. I'm making the split wider, but you know, whatever. She'll be right. And then I'm gonna get my wedge, stick it in there a bit, get my hammer. Just tap it in there and then wipe the excess glue off. Done. Once all of the stripping and repairs were done and dried, I went in by hand with 240 grit sandpaper and worked my way up to 400 grit sandpaper everywhere. Did not use my power sander because it was not necessary. Sanding by hand also meant that I didn't lose any of the natural dips and grains and grooves that were left behind. The original plan was to find a red lacquer to refinish these with, but discussing it with my client, she decided that she would like a lighter finish on them this time, and the best way for me to do that was to just go in with clear coat. I had considered needing to do a whitewash on them to keep them light, but just doing the clear coat on them, on them came up with such a lovely soft honey colour it didn't go orange or yellow or anything like that. It was just a really, really subtle tone that it came up, came out with and I absolutely love it and I hope she does too. If you've been here before, you will know that the clear coat I'm using is Cartamilli clear coat. I'm rolling it on using a Two Fussy Blokes smooth roller and the combination of these two is just perfect. Now that everything's had three coats of clear coat, I'm using Cartamilli Boutique Hemp Oil and I believe it's 600 grit sandpaper or it might be, yeah, I believe it's 600 grit. And I'm basically just going to apply some oil to the sandpaper. You can also rub it all over the piece by hand. That's what I've done on other pieces. And I'm just basically wet sanding the clear coat and it comes up with such a baby bottom smooth finish it's oh it's like butter butter is just absolutely beautiful Now, I'm sorry I didn't show the process, but I cleaned all of these within an inch of their life and polished them with Brasso. So what do you think guys? Did I do it justice? I couldn't possibly be happier with how it turned out. I'm actually really, really happy and I hope the owner is too and we've got two more pieces to do one of them is in two sections so I'll, I'll consider it three pieces but I'll put those ones in one video but yeah um, really happy with how it turned out don't forget to check the description for everything that I've used I'll even chuck a couple of tool links in there as well and yeah I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy the other ones that go along with it and I will catch you guys next time.